Glen Field Interceptor 650. Now you guys know it's not a new bike, but it is a new bike to my channel. I did a bit of a poll and you guys suggested that you wanted to see a few more modern classics on the channel, so here we are. In this video, I'm going to talk briefly about the specs, about the stats, give you guys an impression of the seat height and the weight of this, and then hopefully at a later date, we'll do some more sort of long form content on this bike where I actually ride it for longer, test its comfort, its fuel efficiency, stuff like that. But for now, first impressions. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. Royal Enfield have been taking the global market by storm since its Interceptor 650 was released in 2018. Since then, it has frequented the top charts of best-selling motorcycles year upon year. And with its bang for your buck and old-fashioned charm, it's not hard to see why this value orientated option has dominated these charts. This specific Interceptor 650 is a 2022 model. However, it's worth noting that Royal Enfield have actually brought out two new colorways for the Interceptor for 2023, which will join the existing color options of Mark II, Sunset Strip and Canyon Red. Luckily for the new blacked out versions, which are available in Black Ray and Barcelona Blue, as well as a fancy paint job, they will come with a few other things that this colour option and the existing ones don't come with. For example, you're going to get black cast alloy wheels, you're going to get a blacked out exhaust as well, and the new blacked out versions will come with different functional and ergonomic features, so these will have an enhanced seat for better comfort, they're going to have new switch gear, a USB charging port, and possibly one of the biggest differences, an LED headlight. So in this vlog, we're going to focus on this beautiful sunset strip colour option with the lovely spoked rims, which I think do make this bike look quite a bit more expensive than, say, the cast alloy wheels. But everything about how a bike looks is completely subjective. At the heart of this machine, we have Royal Enfield's Euro 5 compliant air-cooled 648cc parallel twin. This engine pumps out just over 47 brake horsepower and delivers a 52 newton meters of torque. If we have a look at the hardware on Royal Enfield's Interceptor 650, the suspension comes in the form of 41mm telescopic forks with 110mm of travel and at the rear we have twin shocks with external reservoirs and they're kind of giving me an Olin's vibe even though they're not Olin's. With regards to suspension I know a lot of people complain that it is quite soft and quite wallowy and that one of the first upgrades a lot of people tend to go for is the suspension. Well I'm looking forward to riding this bike more and figuring out for myself exactly what I make of it but I'll be sure to report back to you guys in more in-depth videos in the future. Moving on to the brakes that sit on the 18 inch wheels, we have a 320mm single disc on the front with calipers by Brembo's offshoot budget brand, Bybri. Then on the rear we have a 240mm disc and let's not forget that the bike has dual channel ABS. If we look at the Interceptor's tank, it is in my favourite colour, which is Sunset Strip. I absolutely love a Germanic vibe and these colours just look so classy and so elegant in my opinion. Now the fuel tank holds 13.7 litres of fuel and you're expected to get a range of around 120 miles. If we pan over now to the seat, we have a lovely flat bench seat with gorgeous diamond shaped stitching. This is one of the things that gives this bike in my opinion a really really retro look. A lot of people have reported that the seat isn't all that comfy 
and that's probably why they've updated and upgraded the seat on the newer 2023 model options but I want to put it to the test myself because everybody's bums are different everybody's weights are different so I'm interested to see exactly what I think about the seat comfort first hand. When the bike got dropped off and I saw the bar and mirrors, I was a little bit confused as to how modern looking bar and mirrors really fit in with this style of bike. But the more I look at them, the more I think, actually, yeah, these suit this bike. When it comes to the handlebars, the switch gear and the dash, everything is just looking a little old school. We don't have any modes. It is very much a back to basics, old school ride. The switch gear is extremely minimal. You just have a light function, indicator functions, a horn function, a kill switch and a starter button. But other than that, you don't have anything like the modern gadgets and gizmos of cruise control, modes, heated grips. It is just a very Billy Bog standard experience. If you look at the dash, you have twin clocks that are both of equal size and on them you have the miles an hour on the left, you have the revs on the right and then you do have a little LCD window and it does show you how many bars of fuel you have left, although it doesn't necessarily show you a numerical range. Right, let's see what we think about this to sit on. Now the seat height of this is 805 mil. So if we're to sit on it, if you look where the pegs are, they're kind of almost directly in the way of your leg going straight down. So I normally go a little bit in front as opposed to a little bit behind but you can do either whatever's comfortable but yeah 805 mil to flat foot so with my left foot on the peg my full right foot is down again just scutching over a little bit so height wise this is perfectly manageable if we talk about riding position Again, we're very set up, we're not like this, we're not like this, we're not adventure bike style. It is just a nice upright position which I think could be quite forgiving on your back. And then if we look at the bend in the leg, I'm a 5 foot 4 individual with a 29 inch inseam and this is what it's like for me. The Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 has a wet weight of 217 kilograms. So we're going to see what it's like to push around. Now, please forgive me because still broken fingers and a slight wrist break. It doesn't make pushing things the most easiest. So I'm not going to make this look smooth <laughs> by any stretch, but we'll give it a go. So let's get it past this lump. Here we go. Okay, so she's got a full tank. It's certainly not the lightest thing to push around. In fact, let's spin it round in a circle. Be right back. Three to five working business days. I'll get round. There we go. So it can be done, it is manageable. I think initially to hoist it off its stand, it does feel kind of heavy to do that. And also with the bar and mirrors, it's not kind of an easy way to do it. Do you go around, do you? And then once you've got it on the balancing point, like for somebody with my arm span, to hold this bar to push back is a bit of a reach but then there's not really kind of much on the smooth seat except the seat itself so that's not too bad actually to grip onto the seat and push it's not too bad a 
but yes, manageable, but certainly quite heavier than I would have thought, put it that way, to push, but manageable. Guys and girls, I hope you have enjoyed this first impressions, bit of a stat breakdown on the Interceptor 650. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, hit that subscribe button as it really helps me out and it helps my channel. And until the next time, guys, take care and ride safe. See you later. So bright, so bright, so bright. I can never get it right. Either the sun's making it too dark because it's behind or I'm directly in front of it. I just can't win, can't win.